I'm pretty sure that last week all of us were pretty creeped out after Ghost Adventures. So many of you guys were messaging me and wanting to know my thoughts on this creepy alien thing with Zack and the guys. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna chat about aliens but the only kind of alien that I want to hang out with is Paul. If you guys haven't seen Paul, it's probably the best movie depicting aliens. It's funny. Don't watch it though if you're easily offended by a little green man cussing a lot and being inappropriate. So the big question is how did everybody sleep after last week's ghost adventures? Pretty creepy. Um, you know the weird thing is, like super fun fact, is when I was getting ready to move from Colorado, we actually looked at houses in Buckeye, Arizona. But it was like, it was more cattle country, it used to be, and then like dairy farms, and they converted it, you know, into like housing. And I need to be in a big city, uh, but close to LA, so that's why we didn't move there, and I had no idea that there were so many like alien things related to Buckeye, Arizona. So I guess it all worked out for the good. So everybody wants to know my opinion on the Ghost Adventures episode and what I think of all of the different things that have to do with alien life. I thought the episode of Ghost Adventures was great. Um, it was super fun to see them doing something different. And I missed Mr. Dave Schrader, so it was really great to see Dave back on with Gak. Gak, gak, gak. Gak. Everyone I know that watched the episode was pretty creeped out for the rest of the night. Um, not everybody that's into ghosts and paranormal is into aliens as well. I'm going to be honest and say that I'm not super versed on it. I know a little bit and I just kind of wanted to share with you guys my opinion and experiences that I've had. So if you haven't checked out my Men in Black video, I will post a link below. Just like a short version of that story is I had a friend that disappeared that was in the military. Uh, supposedly he had found a little bit too much um, evidence and information on extraterrestrials and he disappeared and the military basically made it look like he died. Do I believe he's dead? I really don't think he's dead. Um, he was really intelligent, he was really kind of high up in command and chain with the Air Force. In fact he was a pilot and I think that he is somewhere out there um, with a new identity and helping the government with UFO tracking and trying to keep it hidden from the public. And that's getting into conspiracy theories and I'm not the biggest conspiracy theorist but you have to watch my video to hear the whole story so watch that first. So of course I'm a believer of men in black so we don't really need to go over that topic because you guys have seen my video. The next big topic though when it comes to aliens is probably greys. They're mainly referred to greys, i.e. like behind me with Paul or little green men, and that's just because of their skin color. I don't believe that all aliens or extraterrestrial look this way. In fact, I think there's probably aliens or ETs among us that look similar to you and I, and we just don't know that they're not from here. There has to be a moment in your life where you have encountered somebody, even if it was someone working in a store or just passing by you on the street 
and you just thought to yourself, you know, I don't think they're from here. I've had that happen to me a lot where I'll like, you know, engage in dialect or conversation with someone and after a second I'm like, they don't look different. You just, their aura and their like energy is like, mm, I just, I don't think you're from here. 40% of reports of people that have alien encounters claim they are the greys. So that's a pretty large percentage. The next big claim is black eyed children. I'm actually kind of on the fence about this one. Um, it's a pretty creepy theory. The problem is, is that there hasn't really been any proof behind it. I mean, at least with alien crafts, we've seen like UFOs, we've had glimpses of that. There's people that have come forward claiming that they've seen, you know, aliens or they've, they've had, you know, tissue from aliens and stuff like that. Um, the problem is with black eyed kids, we don't have any of that research. A lot of the people that claim to have um, encounters with black eyed children will say six months after they will suddenly be diagnosed with cancer and they have to have like radiation treatment. And um, they think that that could be considered to, you know, when you're around aliens or alien technology, um, something that has that high of radiation or whatever the aliens emit will give you cancer. I've done my research with the black eyed children. There was a guy named Brian Bethel who's the first that came out with the story of black eyed kids and it was sometime between 1996 and 1998 which is when the internet really became genuinely popular. The backstory on it is that basically he wasn't able to pay some of his bills so he kind of conspired this massive story in his head of these black eyed children coming up to him in the bank of a parking lot and then after that encounter all of these people started to come forward across the world saying they too had encounters with black eyed children. The problem is, is that 1996, 1998, when this was actually reported, it was the very first text documented report of black eyed children. Other alien encounters or even UFO encounters stem back to way before that, as we all know. Even people have claimed to get, you know, not only the UFOs on tape, but we've also had men in black to be claimed on tape or on film. No one yet has been able to capture any sort of images of black eyed children. Some claim that they could be demonic, some claim they could be um, aliens or demonic aliens. I'm not saying it's impossible, obviously I'm in a field where anything could be possible, however, Doing my research with the Black Eyed Kids, I think that it's probably more highly unlikely that it's a factual sort of story. Do your research though before you totally buy into stuff. Um, and you know, who knows, maybe one day we will get some proof that some of this stuff totally evidently exists. So the next question is, is how do I feel about aliens? From the disappearance of my friend, um, he was very, very serious and dedicated to um, alien research and I totally believed him and he had actually sent me documented, you know, things that he had gotten. Like I said, I'll link the video below. I had seen stuff that just had never, you know, people had never seen before. I mean, it's hard to think that our tiny little planet in our solar system, you know, in the Milky Way, you know, we're the only beings out there. If I believe in ghosts and the afterlife, it would be hard for me to say that nothing else exists. And like I said, I have encountered people where I'm just like, I don't think that you're, you're human. Do I believe abduction exists? Absolutely. That was the thing with my friend that did the research from the Air Force was that he was trying to educate me on the difference between good aliens and bad aliens. And he was basically explaining that just like the human race, there are good humans and there are bad humans. I am not the biggest UFO searcher, um, alien researcher. I really feel, I guess maybe it's my conspiracy theory uh, a lot of people believe that, you know, the government and the military are trying to hide it from the public by always saying it's a weather balloon accident or it was some sort of, you know, undocumented Air Force experiment that they were doing. Because the military and government are involved, possibly even the men in black, um, with my experience, I get concerned with doing research about this stuff just because I really believe that the government and the military have the power to make you disappear um, basically for releasing too much information or too detailed of information. So I mean the alien part is, I don't really know if that's really scary to me, um, you know just like humans there's bad humans that I'm afraid of as well just like there's bad aliens we should probably fear. But I think that the part that's more scary is when the government and the military gets involved and they want to keep you quiet. 
Just like how my friend kind of disappeared and all of his belongings were sold. That was not like Sean. He was very proud of his rank in the Air Force. So because that happened to me personally, I definitely believe that, you know, other life extraterrestrials exist. And I believe the biggest problem is the government and the military do not want to expose that to the public. Personally, I think the biggest reason they want to keep it on the down low or keep it quiet or secretive is I think they're afraid of like some sort of mass hysteria. For the most part, all of us are sane humans, but, but there are some people out there that may not be able to handle that kind of information and might go crazy. Maybe looting can get involved, maybe violence could get involved. I really truly believe that's why the government tries to keep it quiet. I have a cousin that was working for NASA. He was a chemical engineer, so he's like super brainiac. And he was doing an internship with NASA. This was quite a few years ago. He was in Chicago. And there was a time that he called me and whatever they were doing, he couldn't really discuss per se. It was some sort of technology. But he told me it was unlike technology that he had ever seen, you know, on Earth before. And he told me he was pretty convinced that NASA was working with aliens or aliens were working for NASA. And he was even convinced that maybe some of his coworkers could be aliens. My cousin told me, and, and you have to remember, this guy's like a super science guy. He doesn't believe in ghosts. He doesn't believe in anything on that realm because he's science. He needs to, I mean, total science. He's like total scientist. He's got to have like, you know, the actual equation in front of him. And if that doesn't exist, then what you're talking about is non-existent. So for him to tell me that he thought some of the technology that he was using at NASA was alien technology, but he was completely convinced that what they were doing or going to release to the public or whatever they were working with was such an advancement that it was not conducted here on Earth. One thing I've learned from being a local in Las Vegas is that Area 51 is a very common discussion and factors in sometimes daily life. When people hear that I get into paranormal and predominantly obviously paranormal ghost hunting and whatnot, they want to tell me experiences they've had here in Nevada with UFO sightings, which are huge here, even in just Vegas. And they also want to tell me, you know, people they've known that worked at Area 51 and things like that. It's really hard to determine, you know, I haven't talked to somebody um, directly that worked for Area 51, so I can't really say that anything exists um, that's, you know, legitimate that they've told me. But I have had multiple people say that Area 51 is definitely linked to some sort of um, working with aliens or alien technology or something like that. And uh, they also do, you know, other normal stuff that the military does. But they do, locals that have been here for years do believe that Area 51 is completely connected to some sort of alien life or alien technology. And I guess after all these years, it's just kind of sort of accepted here as a local. Getting into things like cattle mutilations, that scares me too, just because it's, um, I love animals, like I'm a huge animal lover, so I don't really like to see the things that have happened to animals and, and how they've been kind of mutilated. I actually had the privilege to get to know a guy named Chuck Zakowski. I'm going to put his website link below. He's not really on a lot of social media. However, he does have a YouTube channel. He doesn't do a ton of uploads all the time, but I really encourage you guys to go check out his channel and some of the stuff that he's done. He's actually been on a lot of paranormal television shows for UFO hunting for years. And one of the main ones that he's been on was Unsolved Mysteries back in the day. So how I met Chuck was just kind of by accident. He happened to be at this paranormal convention. I had been invited to a paranormal convention as a guest speaker and so had Chuck. So when we were kind of behind stage and we were kind of just chatting, he asked me what I did and we actually ended up sharing cards and sharing stories and I was completely shocked to hear um, kind of his background. So Chuck Zukowski, if you don't know anything about him, he was actually a sheriff's deputy for like 25 or 30 years in Colorado. He was getting calls, um, mainly in southern Colorado, uh, basically for, you know, these animals were dying, mainly, you know, goats or predominantly cows. And when he would show up to do, you know, the investigations of just regular police work, he realized that the mutilations were not normal mutilations like a person would do. 
you guys know how I am and like my empathy's kicking in and it's like choking me up and making me sick because you guys know I hate talking about this stuff. <clears throat> so I'm going to get through this. So once he started doing a lot of investigations into the cattle mutilations, he was taking pictures and he started documenting all this stuff while he was on the police force as a sheriff deputy. In other words, these, this guy has some pretty good credentials, credibility behind him. So eventually when he had enough of evidence compiled between pictures and everything else, he went to his boss that was at the sheriff's office and basically they told him that if he did not stop that they were going to have to fire him or let him go, that he couldn't be doing, you know, like UFO investigations. That wasn't their job as a police force. The police force is here to basically protect humanity. At that point, Chuck made the decision to, even though he went to school for the police force, he actually quit being a sheriff's deputy after all that time. And he went full time into UFO hunting, alien hunting, and, uh, you know, the conspiracy theories behind crop circles um, and cattle mutilations and all that stuff. I was actually really excited when I got to know him because I had captured some really strange footage of what they're called is Roswell rods. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but after the 1947 Roswell, New Mexico incident is when these like rods, alien rods, is what they're claimed is some sort of alien activity or alien spiritual activity. Nobody really knows, but these rods actually showed up around Roswell. So that is how they got the name of Roswell rods. I was in this super tiny town called Antonito, Colorado. Um, if you get a chance to Google it, it's a super strange little city. It's probably eight blocks long, very small. I think there's maybe um, 300 people total that live there. It's very tiny. I did do an investigation there. I will also link that below. It's kind of um, our older footage, but I, if you guys are interested in seeing it. I also did another investigation at the Bross Hotel, which was in Paonia, Colorado, where we received Roswell rods. So Chuck was very familiar with Antonito, Colorado. Once we got down there, we were investigating somewhere called the Rivers Inn. It's just basically an old mansion that was built. But once we got down there and started interviewing some of the locals, we found out that there was a UFO watchtower there. They'd had chupacabra sightings there. They had a banshee. They had cow mutilations. It was crazy. And it was funny because Chuck had actually been there to do some of the investigations for cattle mutilations. So I did show um, Chuck some of the footage that we had gotten mainly from Paonia, Colorado with the Roswell rods and Chuck was shocked to see him and he said yeah it was definitely usually linked towards alien life. He had seen it before and usually it was captured in areas where they had had cattle mutilations or usually contact with aliens or where they'd even seen alien ships touch down. So make sure that you check Chuck out because he's a really cool guy and I was excited to get to know him. It was really funny because um, we had this really great rapport and, and we were talking and he was like asking me ghost questions because he's not really into like ghost hunting and that, you know, that paranormal side of stuff. And I was asking him like alien UFO questions. And pretty soon he looked at me and he's like, I'm just going to be honest. He was like, ghosts really scare me because I can't see them and that's why I like alien stuff because I can see things and, and I can document them. But he goes, I believe in ghosts, I just, it scares me. And I looked at him and I was like, to be honest, I'm not a big alien UFO person. And so he was like, if I need you, I'll call you and if you need me, you call me. And we were both like, that's gonna work. So if I ever get some sort of strange thing in the future, like Ghost Adventures got to do, I will be calling Chuck to help me because he is the pro. In fact, for a fun fact, I think that there's actually a movie in the works for, um, you know, like a documentary of Chuck's life and the things that he's done. And he's made a full-time salary and living out of um, UFO hunting, alien hunting, and conspiracy theories. Another question you guys have asked me is regarding chupacabras. I am not the biggest crypto person, and that's mainly because if I were to go out in Virginia or like North Carolina where the Mothman is and tried to find him, if he came after me, I would be the stupid girl in the scary movies that like tripped and fell and died on a rock. 
that would be me. That's why I don't do cryptozoology stuff. I'm just not the most coordinated person. My agility for like hunting after something legitimate and then like documenting it and also trying to survive, it would it's it wouldn't work for me. <laughs> it just wouldn't work. So the chupacabra actually goes way back and the furthest that they've found it is in Mexico in the Mayans and in some of the Mayan temples they've actually found decent pictures that the Mayans drew with rock on the walls of the chupacabra. Of course there could be different kinds of species of chupacabras. I don't really believe that it's the dog form totally that you see. I believe they could probably walk on all fours. From the research that I've done, I believe it could be some sort of alien creature, maybe even a pet or something that was sent here for research. I don't believe it's something that actually just like eats animals and, and does like the goat sucking, blood sucking thing to kill the animals. I think that it's for some sort of documentation purposes from wherever it's from. The one that they claim that is the chupacabra that's in like the dog form that looks like the skinny scrawny rat mixed with a dog. I don't really know if that's the actual chupacabra that um, exists. I don't, I mean it could be another form of the chupacabra. If I can find a picture for you guys from what I've seen with the Mayans and which is the oldest form of the chupacabra, I will try to put it up right now for you guys. Of course the chupacabra has not ever been captured. You know, there hasn't ever been some sort of uh, video footage or anything like that. At least with like Bigfoot, Josh Gates did an amazing job with finding footprints and even hair. And with some of these things, there just hasn't been anything documented and found. And that's where I have a really hard time. Um, just because everyone has smartphones nowadays, everyone has dash cams. And it's really hard to find legitimate evidence of this stuff on the internet because there is so much great editing you know, software out there for video footage, it's hard to really determine what is legit and what isn't. Sometimes people can be really great at video editing and make things look super realistic, and so it's really hard to you know, decipher between what's real and what isn't, and the same goes with photographs. I think that Ghost Adventures did amazing, and I feel bad for all of them because they looked super creeped out and I think everyone had a really hard time sleeping that night after the episode, but I thought it was awesome. If you guys are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe below, leave me good comments, and let me know what you want to hear next time and I'll catch you later guys.